you guys doing tonight? I am super excited about tonight's no fail layout. So I just want to um, just give it a couple minutes to see, uh, let others join um, before we actually dive into the nitty gritty. But hopefully you guys will be playing along tonight because we're going to do mixed media. And um, as you guys know, I, I love, hi Tina, thanks for joining. Um, I love mixed media and I love teaching what I know, which I don't know a whole lot. I know some basics, but um, I every time I have taught mixed media, uh, everybody just seems to have a really great time with it. So i um, hoping that folks will join in. So we're just gonna give it a minute or two and and see if others hop on. And I gotta get a couple more tools so I'm ready to go here. Hopefully you guys had a nice week, but thank goodness the weekend is here. Hi mom, thanks for joining. <laughs> My heat gun was still on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and I gotta plug in my phone. All right. Okay. So I'm just getting a few more supplies here, so bear with me. Hopefully you all saw the invite. Hi, Joyce. Um, saw the invite with the supply list if you are playing along tonight. Um, so we're going to need some photos, some uh, mixed media. And what I mean by mixed media is like watercolors, uh, um, any of your sprays or mists that you own. Hi, Terry. Oh, I'm so glad you're on tonight. Uh, welcome. Some Any sprays that you might have. Um, you can even use the, um, if you have, uh, liquid watercolor, this will work. This technique will work as well. So, um, there's, you could use a lot of different mixed medias to get this look. So I am going to be playing around with, um, a watercolor palette. This is from close to my heart. Um, it's actually my... Um, go-to and favorite watercolor palette because the colors are really great and vibrant. Um, so if you are interested in purchasing these, uh, let me know and I can give you the link. These are really wonderful. So I'm going to play with the watercolors and I'm also going to play with uh, the, sh the sprays, the mixed media sprays. The other important thing when it comes to mixed media is your background paper. So um, Yay, Joyce! I know these are so fun. I know you're 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 love mixed media like I do. Um, uh, so this is the layout we're doing. This is the summer sketch challenge for for August or late summer. I don't really know the month. I've lost track of time. I'm sure many of you have as well. Um, and so the background here behind the strips of paper is where we're going to do this mixed media. And I think um, I might throw in some stenciling as well. Um, so we'll have fun with some modeling paste too, or texture paste, if that's what we want to call it. So we'll do that as well. So you're probably going to want a heat gun. Um, and then when it comes to your background paper, so these are the photos I'm scrapping. Wyatt playing in the sprinkler. I can't wait. I love these pictures. Um, I am currently just using like a thin, uh, not a thin, but a heavier stock double-sided paper. Um, so when you're doing mixed medium, on paper like this uh, it's easy to get wet and um, like like tear apart if you get it too wet or like really wrinkle these are gonna wrinkle no matter what when we're doing mixed media but 
the the fibers of the paper um, will kind of like wrinkle up if you get it too too wet so I have two recommendations uh, one would be go to cardstock it's a little bit more durable um, you're if you're still going to have that issue but not as much with just a regular background paper option number two is watercolor paper and I'll show you the brand I prefer so if I was doing a white background this is the brand I would choose it's the Vicki Booten foundations paper it is a, an amazing watercolor paper it's just made for all forms of mixed media it's awesome stuff so it's hard to come by so when you find it and you like this technique you definitely want to buy uh, the foundations paper or any other like watercolor paper but this is the brand that I personally prefer and then the third option is if you're going with a pattern colored paper um, you can use gesso and so gesso is um, it, basically what it does is it protects your paper from the water and the inks and watercolors from setting it kind of like sets on top of your paper rather than soaks into it so it protects it's like a layer of protection on your paper so if you're just going to use like a plain or a pattern paper that's kind of on the thin side or regular cardstock i recommend using gesso um, and i have a clear gesso and i also have a white gesso and um, because I'm doing a darker background today, I'm actually going to go with the white gesso. So um, these are really great to have on hand if you actually if you enjoy mixed media. It really changes the behavior of the inks and watercolors and the sprays on your background paper. So I know that was a lot to take in, <laughs> but I just want to make sure that you guys are you know are best prepared if you're not doing it today you at least know the supplies you need and if you are um you can still have fun and make do uh with with this um this layout and the mixed media just be careful with how much water you're putting on your paper if you don't have the watercolor paper or the gesso so that's it's just a a, a, a little bit of air of caution there all right so we're gonna get started so again, I'm going to bring the layout out. So this is the, the sketch I pulled from the Hip Kit Club. They have really, you don't have to be a part of, you don't have to be subscribed to the Hip Kit Club to join their group. I highly recommend uh, you guys going over there and joining their group. It's Hip Kit, Hip Kit Club. It's right down there. Um, they have a lot of fun sketches like this. They have so much talent on there. So if you're looking for inspiration or new ideas, this is a really great group to join. So just uh, uh, want to put that out there. But I grabbed this sketch. I haven't done it yet from them, and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys as well. So we're getting three photos in here. Um, but again, you can take a sketch and turn it into whatever you want to turn it into. Um, you don't have to do the sketch exactly how it's meant to be. So uh, I, wanted, I want you guys to remember that. So, and that's what I like to do. I like to take sketches and I like to change things about it. Um, like, you know, for instance, these stars, maybe I'll make them a different shape. Um, or the title, uh, maybe I'll make that a fourth photo. So I do things like that all the time. They're just a good baseline and an idea. So here's a sketch. Hopefully you guys have it. If not, it's on the Jessica Friends and Pretty Pages um, group to reference. And it's also in this event invite. So... Um, this is what we're going to do. So this background here is mixed media. Um, so we're going to build our background first. So that's where we're going to get started. Um, so let's just dive right in. So I am going to trim off this branding strip first. I'm going to make more room on my desk here. There's supplies everywhere. All right. So normally when I do mixed media, I... I try not to use my heat gun too much um, because it does warp the paper um, if you put too much heat on it um, or it curls it up more than I would like sometimes but because you know this is alive and I don't want you guys to like sit there and, and literally watch paint dry <laughs> um, I think it would be beneficial to use a heat gun tonight so it's there's no there's no right or wrong you, you can certainly use a heat gun but um, just you have to be careful how much heat you put on it because it does do um it will curl your paper all right 
So first things first, these are my photos. So as you can see, I'm already kind of changing the layout of my photos a little bit. So I am doing um, a photo strip and then I'm doing this larger photo of Wyatt um, jumping from the water. He was having a blast that day. Um, I, I, I don't know if you guys have an iPhone, but you can uh, like hold down Hi Sharon, welcome. Uh, you can hold down the picture taking button on your iPhone and it will do a burst shots and so you can capture like a, it will just keep taking snapshots. And so I was able to um, get these uh, images of him running through the sprinkler and, and catch these. Uh, <laughs> it just cracked me up. Uh, these pictures, like I have this other one too and I was almost thinking about doing this one instead but um, I don't know I kind of like the order of how these are running through I don't know if you guys can see let me bring a little closer but anyways so instead of doing the three I am doing uh, these let me share it with you um, the little photo strip in this photo here so just super cute really fun all right so I want to get a general idea of uh, where my photos are going to be placed and per the sketch, they're kind of on the upper, you know, upper half, upper third of, or upper two thirds of the, the layout. So I'm going to put it here. Now, when it comes to mixed media, it always looks like a hot mess <laughs> when you guys are building it. So don't panic. It's supposed to be messy. It's supposed to be just fluid and fun and pretend like you're in kindergarten you have finger paints and you're just going to get it everywhere. That's what mixed media is intended to be. So, um... I like to have a, just a general idea of where it's going and so it's going to go about right here. And when you're building it, because we're laying photos and stuff on top, it's going to cover a lot of it. Um, so I just want to get a general idea of where it's going. And so first things first is I am actually going to take my gesso and I am going to lay my gesso on first. So I... I am choosing white gesso, like I told you before, it does come clear, um, but I'm choosing white because um, I have a dark background and I'm going to want my colors to kind of uh, stand out um, on this layout. And if I were just to do the watercolors um, on this wood grain background without any white, you would still see them, but they wouldn't be as uh, predominant, and so I really wanted them to kind of, kind of stand out. So. So I'm just putting a thin layer on here. You don't need to do too much, and I'm just kind of making it messy. Um, I don't want it perfect. I just kind of want strokes everywhere. Decent coverage. Kind of in the center here, you're not really going to notice because that's where our photos are going. Um, so you can kind of make that a little more just normal brushing. All right. So again, this is going to kind of prevent the watercolors from soaking too much into your paper and kind of making it a mushy, a mushy mess. That's really what gesso does. And it gives you, this white gesso gives you a base for your colors to go on. So I'm just going to kind of give a look-see of where my photos are landing. Perfect. So as you can see, um, I got some gesso around them. Uh, so that's great. Perfect. So now I'm going to just going to bring in my heat gun. So it's going to be noisy for a minute, but I'm going to bring in my heat gun so I can speed up this process. And I'm, I'm not putting too much heat in one area because the paper is going to curl a little bit and that's normal because this is thin um, colored pattern paper. Hi Patricia. Hi Colleen. Welcome. Um, so we're just going to dry this. And we're pretty good. Didn't take much time at all to dry. Alright, so as you can see, my paper is curling just a little bit. That's okay. When you're done with your layout, um, you can certainly put like it, some weighted stuff on there if you want to flatten it a little bit. Um, or, you know, once you get it in the page protector in your album, it's going to flatten out. So don't really worry about the, um, 
the the curling okay so for my layout I am using um, this uh, Coco Vanilla Boys Wool collection so I wanted to kind of my colors to be um, I wanted I want my mixed media to kind of look like this so I'm gonna start with the blue base and then I'm gonna build in some green and um, maybe even some yellow so that's the look I'm kind of going for so we are gonna start with some watercolors so I have my little spray bottle here and I'm just going to spray down this light blue and I'm going to show you guys the packaging technique which is you take some packaging from any any um, ephemera pack that you purchase with die cuts or anything like that this clear plastic package you want to if you like mixed media you want to save these for this technique these work great um, and uh, so that's what we're going to be using. I just got to trim this one it's, uh, in half to start off with. And then we're, we're going to go in with our paintbrush eventually. But I want to do um, the kissing technique first. I need a paper towel. Alright. So we have our little... You can't see it, but my little clear plastic sheet here. And so I'm going to go through and kind of spritz my gesso with some water. Make sure my watercolor is nice and soaked up. And I think I'm going to start with this um, light blue. And so I am just going to spread it on my plastic paper. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Because we want it nice and runny and fluid. And I'm literally just going to kiss the background and it's okay just it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna go in and we're gonna play around with it and if you get it everywhere don't worry about it so as you can see this is uh, the gesso is kind of keeping um, this watercolor on top of the paper instead of having it soak in it's really a magic magic medium <laughs> it's wonderful stuff um, I'm not gonna worry so much about the center here because again my photo is going to be covering a lot of of what's there and if you need to you can go in and dab a little water lighten it up a little bit I'm gonna go in with a little bit more color darken it up in some places I want it light in others it's really just how it all, how you want it to look, really. There's no right or wrong. This is what's fun about mixed media. I love it. So fun. So, so fun. All right. So now we're going to go in with some green. Uh, but what I'm going to do before I go in with the green, um, if you mix the blue and the green, uh, as is all wet it's going to make like a mud color and I don't want mud so I'm gonna come back in with my heat gun and dry it out a little bit I'm just gonna spread the water around a, a little bit in places and that's okay and this is gonna take a minute to dry as you can see I'm kind of moving those that water around and it's okay if your splats and your water goes elsewhere. Again, this is supposed to be messy, not perfect. So don't worry about it. Just kind of move around. Don't do too much heat in one place. Just keep going around your paper. So I've gotten that pretty good so I'm gonna just go in and kind of dabble the wet areas so it just picks it up a little bit and dries all right there is my blue okay so
so now I've wiped off my excess, my blue, and so I'm going to go back in with some green. Just start with the watercolors, and then I'm going to go in with the, the misty sprays after. So I know this seems silly, but now I'm going to go back in and add water again to my gesso. And then I'm going to add some green. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just do that kissing method. So it, it's just placing um, the watercolor kind of in random places um, where I want it to be. So I don't want to do too much green. I just kind of want to highlight some areas. So I'm going to go back in and just kind of move it around. Loving that. It's looking great. And you can add more, you can add less, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter. It's really all about the look you're going for. But I I love how that looks. And again, we didn't get mud because we dried that blue. Oh, Colleen, the white stuff is called gesso. I'll show you. Um right here. So you can get this at Joann's, the Liquid Text Basic Gesso, um, or any art store really, and it comes uh, clear or white. So I'm using white, but if you want, like we're doing a white background, you can get away with clear or any other background. Um, the one I'm using is a, a different brand. It's Vicki Booten uh, White Gesso, um, and it works great. It helps protect your page. Okay, so... We got some green on here, so I'm going to go back in with my heat gun and I'm going to dry up this green because then I want to come in with some shimmer sprays, some different shades. So I'm done with my watercolors for now. I'm going to dry up that green a little bit. It's going to move it around and that's okay. But again, we don't want mud. We want these colors to stand out on their own. So if we dry them, they won't mix. Which is what we're trying to achieve here. Alright, so I'm going to go in and dab a little bit. See if i got any pockets of water. Alright, we are coming along. So I just want to check my photo placement and we're looking good so as you can see we're coming together and remember we're gonna have some paper behind this we're gonna have some embellishments so again we're still seeing a lot of this but um, we won't as we build our page out um, more of this is probably gonna be hidden so um, you want to make sure you do a nice generous spot and don't worry about splatters it just adds um the look to your to your page all right so i'm happy with that okay so next i'm going to go in with some uh shimmer sprays and these are a couple of different brands i have this is more of like a turquoise um this one is a shimmers color and it's well uh well blew me down it's called um so i think this is going to be too turquoise for I don't know there is kind of some turquoise in there so let's try it let's see all right so again I'm gonna go in and wet my paper and I am going to clear off my little plastic sheet here and I'm gonna just spritz some on here if the spritz will work. Often I don't spritz these because one, the spritzers get clogged, and two, I, I do a lot of um, uh, splats with this stuff, so either way. So I'm gonna put it here on my little mat, and then I'm going to add some water to it. Oh, my brush is still green. Whoopsie, we gotta do that again. Make sure you clear off your paintbrush, folks. <laughs> or you're going to mix some colors. All right. 
Um, oh, here we go. Okay. So we're going to add this to the plastic. Are you guys playing along tonight? I think Joyce is. Is anybody else doing this layout too? Or are most of you just watching? Just curious. Let me see. I'm just going to like... There we go. Um, have any of you played with mixed media before? Or is this kind of a new venture for you? Just wondering. I like to kind of know where you guys are at and the sort of stuff that you've learned. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go in with this teal color. I'm not going to do the um, packaging technique this time. I'm just going to go in and, and kind of add it in. Again, it's a different color. Um, and Oh, good, Patricia. Totally new. Well, hopefully um, it's kind of intriguing to you. Maybe you'll try it. <laughs> um, if you need a list of products, make sure you message me. I'd be happy to... Um, uh, get you get you some links um, Terry you're remodeling oh super fun <laughs> thanks for watching though and joining hopefully it's a nice break from remodeling all right so I am just gone in and I have added a little bit of that teal color I'm just going to lighten some of it up So then I have this, let's see here, I think I'm going to add a little bit of a darker blue. So I'm going to see what I have in my stash here. That's vibrant turquoise, that's a green. I think I have, oh here we go. So I have a darker blue, this is a Shimmers Vibes Deep Blue Sea. So I am going to add a little bit of dark blue to this. So I got my plastic sheet. It's getting lost on my mat here. And these have like a little shimmer glitter to them, which is kind of cool. So it will sparkle a little bit. All right. So this is a much deeper blue. Let's see how this is going to look add this in here. Just a little bit darker tone. Add some dimension. Again, no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just whatever feels right to you. Um, I am by no means an expert. I just play. That's all I do is play. Um, it's fun. It's really fun to me. And hopefully you guys are finding it fun too. All right. So we got some darker hue in there. I'm gonna go in with my heat gun again. I'm starting to get some little valleys in my paper where stuff is sinking in, so I have to move it around. But that's alright. Part of the fun. darken up as much as I would like it ha to have so let me see if I can add a little bit more in some of these areas again just playing hi John hi Jess <laughs> thanks for joining um, all right so I want to add a little bit more dark blue because I just 
it's not it didn't show up as well as I was hoping so let's see if we can just add a little bit more here in some areas again just playing figuring out what looks good what's working getting some of that dimension in here bit more dimension there so I'm gonna let that go just as is and not heat gun it so the other thing I want to try is another shade of green and let's just do a little spread here again this is a this one's a Lindy's Shimmer spray called it's a starburst and uh, it doesn't give me an actual. Well, oh, hold on. Oh, Mad Hatter Mint is the name of it. It's a really awesome, like emerald green. I love the shimmer to it as well. All right, so we're going to go back in and maybe just add some of this lovely dark green in here if it will show up. There we go. It's not too bold, which is what I wanted. Um, I just wanted a different hue. I'm actually just gonna dip right into this. Ah. Dip right into this container. <laughs> Probably easier. There we go. You guys probably can't see the shimmer on here, but it is awesome got just a little sparkle to it it's really great I love it I love these Lindy sprays I got these from hip kit club um, it came in one of the mixed media kits um, and I love the mixed media kits that they offer because I I am learning to like I don't know all the product um, out there I'm I'm green I just play and learn and so I really love the hip kit for that reason because um, it gives me the opportunity to get a sample of various, you know, product and supplies and I, without a big commitment, and then I, I learn how to play with it and see if I like it. And then I go in and, and get more if I want to, which is really great. Um, it's a great way to add to your stash little bits at a time and it's not overwhelming. Uh... All right, so what I want to do, the last thing I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of yellow. Um, so I'm hoping that we can go in and add this yellow without too much disruption to the greens and the blues. Um, so I'm taking a finer brush and I'm kind of just going in along the where the blue and greens kind of meet and adding some yellow kind of like a galaxy. I guess that's what this kind of reminds me of. This kind of packaging, paint brushing technique. It reminds me of a galaxy, which is really cool. It's a fun look. Really fun look. All right, so add some over here. And we're getting close. So as you can see, it's kind of coming together now. We're building, we're building, we're building and building some more. Adding those layers of color and you're just going to get it to where you want it. Whatever's going to look good to you. And I am loving, I think adding a little bit of yellow really helps. Pretty, pretty. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Beautiful, okay. And so there's some mixed media. And <laughs> it, 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 I know probably a lot of you are just like, okay, Jess, it's like a big splotch on your paper, but I promise you when we build, build it up and we add the rest of our layout to it, it's going to look 
it's going to look great and you're going to you're going to be so surprised with yourself and you're going to be like wow i made this and that's the goal of no fail fridays like it's i want to teach you guys these techniques and show you that um anybody can do this anybody at all so and i hope you guys uh take that away uh, uh with these layouts because that's that's what i'm that's my goal anyway that's what i'm trying to do all right so don't put your mixed media too far away because we may come back and do some splatters here. Now, um, we have this mixed media and then we're going to go back to our sketch here. And um, they have some stars going on here um, on the layout. So I thought it would be kind of fun to maybe add a stencil. So I got to go through. I just thought of this as I'm looking at this layout. So I thought it might be fun to see if I have a stencil that would work well, kind of um, do a similar thing. Um, and we can do some texture paste too. So if you bear with me a moment, I'm gonna just pull out my stencils. And see what we have to play with. And I have lots of different ones and that one's stars, and I don't know, I mean, this has nothing to do with stars, so, I mean, it doesn't have to, you know, again, I don't have to be a literal scrapper, I don't care if it's stars or whatnot, um, it's still, ooh, that one might work better, because they're bigger. Oh, I do have, this one's cool. I think, I think I'm going to do stars anyway, but let me just check and make sure I don't have anything else that would work out better. I get my stencils from all over the place. I've gotten some from Walmart, Hip Kit Club, um, various craft stores. My, you know, I just pick them up because they're so fun to use. You can use them with texture paste or um, watercolor. I've done that as well. You can also use them. You can also use them with um, the mousses, like the, the, let me show you what I mean. Um, the Nuevo embellishment mousse. Actually, now that I think of it, <laughs> I might do that instead. Oh, look at that. I'll show you guys a product. And, um, <laughs> I know I'm going to use this. Um, so we can use texture paste and let me just, um, tell you where you can get this texture paste from. So you can get it from, uh, many craft stores. I got this from close to my heart. They carry this uh, opaque and it's kind of like, um, it reminds me of fluff. It's like a whipped, um, uh, medium. And so you can, and you can color it, you can tint it, you can add glitter to it. It's super, super fun. So, uh, I often do my stencils with this and I'll add a color in. Um, but since I have my Nuevo, um, or Nuvo, sorry, not Nuevo, Nuvo embellishment mousse, I'm actually just going to use this cause it's in yellow. And I think, um, yellow would be a nice compliment, I believe to this, to this layout. So, but yeah, texture paste you can do with your stencils too. All right, so I have yellow and I have teal. So I'm going to see, I don't know. I still think yellow will work. I'm looking at the colors. There's not really any yellow. It's more orange um, in this paper. So I'm wondering if the yellow might be too much and I'm better off going with the teal stars. Play it safe. Hmm. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with this teal color. All right. Decision made. So. When you're doing textured paste, you're going to want some tools. Like little, little spatulas. Um, little tools like this. Again, I got these. Oh, Patricia, you're thinking yellow? 
Oh, now you're making me change my mind. All right, let's have everyone weigh in here. Are we gonna go teal or are we gonna go yellow? I'm torn. I'm, I might even try to mix them in, but I, uh, I might be able to do that. Maybe I can do a mix of both. What do you think? I'd love to see. So Patricia's voting yellow. What did everybody else say? Give me, give me your thoughts. Oh, Tina's saying yellow. All right, we got two for yellow. I, I was torn, so I could go either way. Ooh, a mix from Sharon. I'm kind of thinking maybe a mix, too. I can play around and see how that works. A stencil is um, big enough. Yellow from Lisa. All right, let's, let's see how this goes on, because I might do some mix. But, all right, so I am just going to take this stencil, and here's where washi comes in handy. Um, so I am just going to take a, a washi that I have in stock, um, one that, that I probably won't use a lot of, which this is a nice like pea green color, um, that I probably won't use too often. Yeah. Oh, see, you guys are like all over the place like I am. I yellow and mix and either one, like. Yeah, so we're just gonna try to do mix. So thanks, thanks for, I love, I love your feedback, guys. Um, thank you. So I'm gonna take this washi and uh, stick down my stencil so it doesn't move around. Um, I this is I call these my El Crapo washies. <laughs> um, it's the ones that I wouldn't tend to use a lot of, so I don't mind using them uh, for stuff like this. Um, or if I'm going to cut dyes like on my. Um, on my uh, cuddle bug, excuse me, I will use washi to stick that down so uh, the dyes don't move around. It works really well. So washi is very versatile. I think you guys are learning that from some of these Friday Night Lives, right? All right, so my, my page is bubbling up a little bit, but that's okay. I'll just kind of hold it down as I'm doing the, the mixed media on here. All right, so we're gonna start with yellow and see how this looks. Now this is my first time playing with this stuff. Um, so I'm glad that I get to do it together with you guys. Um, this is Nouveau Embellishment Mousse um, and it says it adds metallic dimension details to any craft product. So I got this as part of my Hip Kit Mixed Media Club and I've been really wanting to use them so I'm super glad um, I went rummaging through my drawer <laughs> to find it. So as you can see it is it is thick. It's a it's a it's definitely um, let me bring that up so you guys can see with the camera. It's definitely a thick mousse. It reminds me of like whipped cream cheese. So you can kind of see that. Um, and it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. So let's see how this will work. So you're just going to go in on your stencil and kind of spread it like butter. Um, so I'm just going to kind of move it around here on some of these stars and then I'll go back and kind of fill in the fill in the areas that I've missed a little bit again it doesn't have to be perfect it's mixed media it's supposed to be fun and fluid and my mantra is there's no mistakes in scrapbooking or crafting for that matter um, so I'm just sprinkling out throughout the stars here and these little tubs are going to last you a lifetime. <laughs> like, that's what I also love about these is that they just, they just go so far. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with them. Alright, got some little dots here that I'm going to add. What a beautiful color. It's like a butter yellow. It's really pretty. It's not too, it's not too much. Alright. Get a little dot here. All right, let's see if we can go back in with that blue without making too much of a mess. And I'm kind of trying to make it scattered. I'm not trying to make it too square. I know this the stencil is square, but um, I try to be conscious of that. We'll see how it comes out. So for those stars on top, you don't have to do, um, you know, you don't have to do mixed media like this. You could just do embellishments or puffy, puffy stickers or 
uh, die cuts or something from your Cricut, you could kind of do whatever, whatever your heart desires. I just thought it would be fun to introduce you guys to mixed media and show you that it is, it can be intimidating and it, and it's really not. It's very easy. Uh, and you just got to relax and have fun, have fun with it. Uh, so this is the, the teal color. It is, um, they don't give me color names. I don't think. Let me look on the bottom here. Oh, I probably helped if I put it there. Uh, yeah, they don't give me names of colors. That makes it a little challenging. It's like if you want to order it, hmm. Sorry guys, I can't give you a color if this is something you are interested in. I apologize for that. They don't have names. Okay. So I'm going to go in with my teals. Oh, what a great combination. And it's okay if the colors overlap. This is supposed to add some texture too. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just doing little bits at a time. my photos come down a little bit so all right I think that wasn't so bad I think this might look okay I'm excited to see it once I rip it up <laughs> all right let's see that's really fun stuff. I love it. All right. So we're going to take my washi up here. Try not to make too much of a mess. Oh, we got some a little bit of leakage on the sides there. I smushed it down too much. Well, that's all right. Kind of looks like splats. So I guess that's something to be careful of when you're when you're doing stenciling and mixed media all at the same time. If your paper's curling, you're going to get that little bit of um, little bit of run underneath your stencil. So I don't know if I can go in and kind of define that at all. Try a little bit, but if not. It is what it is. It's okay. Not a big deal. It is coming up all right, but they kind of look like that one looks like a smush circle rather than a star, but that's okay. All right, let's see about this one. Clean that up a little bit. Overall, not too bad. Um, oh, I got a little teal on that yellow one there. So it will take some more practice for me to get better at this. However, I do like the yellow and the blue. Um, and let me see if I can bring it a little closer so you guys can see that it's dimensional. I'm hoping I get you some angles so you can kind of see that. All right, so we're gonna go in with our heat gun. Back again with the heat gun. So we're going to want to dry this so it doesn't smudge everywhere. I might go back and add a few more stars once I get everything else on here, but for now we got general placement. And I'm not really sure how long this takes to dry, so bear with me. Oh, not long at all. Very quick. All right. So that dried pretty quick to the touch. I'm sure if I was to press on it, it still would spread out everywhere, but we're not gonna, 
We're not gonna play with that too much right now, so we can leave that there. So now we're ready to add our paper. All right, so we have our photos again here. I gotta mat that one. So let me go ahead and do that, because I want that in white as well. Let's start there. a general general idea of what's going on with the photos so now I want to go in and find some strips of paper to put behind um, again with the layout uh, it's got some strips of paper behind here so I'm not going to do stitching tonight um, if I was feeling more adventurous I would but uh, for time's sake I'm just gonna make them strips so let's get my pick out my strips and I'll get my paper trimmer and we will trim those up I just got to find the colors that I want to use so we got a gray and a blue I'm hoping I can find more of this green over here I'm trying to finish up this kit I've used a lot of it and um, I'm trying to, ah, look at that, we got green, yay! One, two, three, there's five, so, and I got a black and white, so let's start, oh, and I have this really nice teal color. Alright, let's try those and see how it looks. Let's get my paper trimmer up here. And it looks like these should be right around like a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna line them up on our trimmer and well, actually more like a half an inch. And I might wanna overlap them. So I'm gonna go with a half an inch and see how that looks. And I definitely don't want them to fold 12 inches. So I'm probably gonna want more like, let's try 11 first. And we can cut them down more if we want to. Yeah, there we go. Ten and a half. So ten and a half long and about a half inch wide is what I'm going to go with. So we're going to trim these up. So when it comes to having a mixed media background, um, your regular tape runner, like when we go to put down um, these strips, uh, is not going to stick very well to the mixed media. So you're going to want to use a wet glue. Um, and I will show you, share with you in, in a moment the brands I use, um, or the brand I use for wet glue. Um, I like, I'll show you the bottle, but I like using uh, Allen's or Aline's, I don't even know how to pronounce it really, um, quick dry tacky glue, that's my favorite. Um, I know a lot of people use glitter glue, Scott's tacky glue, um, anything, anything that's made for paper and arts and crafts works really well. I, I got this new brand too that, um, called, what is it called? Barely, Barely Art Glue and it's supposed to be comparable to the glitter glue but uh, a more affordable option so I have it. I played around with it a little bit. It's not a quick dry, so I'm kind of, I don't know, I really like the, uh, the, um, Elaine's quick dry, because it doesn't, because it dries quick and I'm kind of impatient, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's my favorite. I'll show you the bottle here in a minute, and I use a, a fine line, a uh, fine line, applicator bottle to get the small pieces but I used also use the big bottle as needed uh, so there's no right or wrong there but my point being is that 
you really need some wet glue. It's not going to, it's not going to stick well without it, unfortunately. Um, so you'll go and use tape and then you'll pick up your layout and the, whatever you've tacked down, your pictures, your, your paper is all, it's just going to fall off. So definitely have some wet glue to adhere this stuff down. All right. So we've got some strips of paper here. that we're going to add to the back. I can't tell you how much I love this collection. I love the colors. I, sh I wish I had the opportunity to buy two. <laughs> They're so great. Um, all right. So I think I'm going to alternate the, the bold colors with the, with the neutrals and so here is the glue I prefer, Aline's uh, Quick Dry Tacky Glue. It really does dry very, very quick. I love it. And it's fairly inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon, Joann's, really anywhere, Walmart. Um, this is my favorite glue. And for the small pieces, I use a fine line um, applicator bottle. You can get this at Hobby Lobby, right in the model car section, and it has a fine tip. Um, so I just fill the bottle with whatever glue I'm using um, so I can get the tiny little pieces. It's great. It's great, great. All right, so we are gonna glue on these papers. How you doing, Joyce? Are you playing along? I can't wait to see your end result. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do This one right here so it is gonna make it a little tricky because the paper's curled so I'm just gonna actually gonna hold this down for a minute so these stick correctly and it dries and again this is quick dry glue so it really it really does dry fairly quickly have the green and if something lifts up um, if I didn't get it very well I can always go back and add some more glue <laughs> undersell your undersell yourself Joyce yeah mom I know this is out of your box but you know what you've been doing a lot of that lately and your layouts have been really pretty so it's kind of nice to step outside the norm every now and again. All right, so I'm offsetting the stripes a little bit just to give some visual interest. Got the blue going in. Are you playing along as well, Mom? Just out of curiosity. And this blue here. So as you can see now, we're kind of covering up some of this mixed media. Again, that's okay. That's the purpose, that's the intent. We have this side coming up a little bit, but I'll address that later. Oh, nice. I'm glad you're playing along. All right. This glue, I can't say enough good things about this glue. I just love it. It just, it, for me, I am such, I'm such an impatient person that this glue is, this, I feel like this glue is made for me <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. Because it dries so fast. So, so fast. I love it. Right. We are getting there with the strips of paper. I love how the colors are tying into um, the photos and the layout and the mixed media so far. It's kind of all kind of matchy matchy to some degree, which I like. Right. 
And last strip is a gray piece. There we go. And the strips are down. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and see how this is looking. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it. So the strips are mainly poking out behind, on either side, which is okay. I am thinking, I'm not sure. I was thinking about doing kind of backing this. So let's let's see what that looks like. Um, but with what? I'm thinking a darker blue. Possibly. Or do I do some tissue paper? Hmm. Maybe I can do tissue paper on that one. Let's see what this will look like. So I'm just going to cut a strip here freehand. I'm thinking about matting my photo strip a little bit more, um, just to just to kind of add a little bit extra to it. So that's what I'm playing with now. I might do some blue in that green, kind of offset it a little bit. Just to see what it looks like. Again, I playing around, trying to trying to add some more layers and some visual visual interest here. And I love the combination of this dark blue and green. I really like it, especially for boys. All right, so what we can do here is just run a tape. a little bit more to it. it does cover up some of the strips but again I'm okay with that because they're really sticking out on the side which is uh, well I could add a couple more actually now that I'm thinking about this another strip on the bottom and another strip on the top star again I could add and sneak under here although I think we could just do another one on the top sorry guys I'm kind of talking to myself but I'm thinking about adding another strip to the top here. So I'm trying to figure out what color to do. I think I want to fill in with one more up there. So bear with me while I find the perfect piece of paper for it. And I swear I just saw it, but I don't know where it went. Okay. Oh, it's just gray. Think. Or maybe I'll do this blue again. Yeah, that's what I'll do. We'll add another piece of blue up there. So that way it kind of sort of blends in with the background, but it still um, it still gives a little bit more to the stripes under there. down and we are going to add this guy up here yes I think it's needed
perfect. I'm just gonna let that stick down for a minute. Definitely matting that, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna commit. I'm not gonna hem and haw over it anymore. I'm gonna commit to this here. Just adds that little bit extra to that photo strip. And then I think I might just leave that guy as is because we have a lot going on. All right, what are we thinking? Are you liking so far? I hope so. Hopefully you're learning something. All right, so now we're gonna get some fun foam and we are going to add it to the back. We're gonna pop up this photo strip first and I'm just gonna do that with some glue. Just cause it's right here in handy. I could do double-sided tape as well. I'm just going to do some glue. I want to lift that up a little bit. I like lifting up my photos. Um, it adds dimension, a little bit of interest. So we're going to pop these up. This is um, self-adhesive fun foam I have here, which makes it super easy. Oh, not, I gotta let it rest for another minute here um, to stick down because one side's already adhesive. So I love that. All right, so we're gonna stick this up right on here. And then this guy is going to go right here. We're coming together. So exciting. So exciting. All right. So I need some, I'm going to need some fill and some foam here. Uh, so let me grab my double sided tape. guys notice like all the fall stuff and the Halloween is coming around now it's kind of unreal that we're already in August and now I'm trying to think I have some fun Halloween stuff Halloween things I want to do and I'm like is it that time already I've been waiting and like now when I see people all starting to make Halloween stuff I'm like I'm, I'm not done with summer yet like I'm kind of done with summer in regards to the heat but like scrapping it I'm like there's still so much I want to do although it doesn't really matter I'll scrap anything at any point in time in the year but it's just kind of unreal to me that uh, we're here already um, in <laughs> like people are talking Halloween it's kind of crazy and it'll be one to remember because I think it's gonna be very different this year for the kids which is unfortunate but you know we'll have fun and be creative for sure we'll figure it out <laughs> Um, all right. Wyatt wants to be, nope, not here in Cali. Yeah. Uncle John. Um, summer did fly by, Tina. I agree. Which is kind of incredible to think about because we didn't do as much as like me, us personally, our family. Um, we didn't do, uh, as much this summer as we would normally do. So it's kind of incredible that it still flew by like that. 113 degrees, no thanks. You can keep that California heat. <laughs> I am all set. 
we had some humid like high humidity days or like well july was pretty much it seemed like uh every day was a dew point of 70 or more and i was dying personally um so you can keep that that hot heat i'm not i'm not made for that <laughs> all right i'm just gonna take a look here at this awesome all right we're coming along we are coming along all right so let's go back to our sketch so now we gotta come up with a title um, and I can journal here uh, when I'm ready to do so and then uh, it will be for the embellishments after that and I can add some more dimensional stars if I want so let's do my title and so for the title here I'm hoping I can use some of these words so I haven't thought of one yet um, so we can go through these die cut titles are also from oh happiness I kind of like that because uh, he was super happy <laughs> about running through the water um, and anyway or best moment kind of works too but that moment is black I wonder if I have it in or this is happiness that might be good too huh. anyways these sorry I'm getting sidetracked these die cuts are from Coco vanilla as well and I always I always buy them um, a, a couple packs just because I love them so much so that's where these um, come from so I'm hoping I can come up with a title from these Um, I could do so happy, possibly. And I think I have another one in the rad one that are black, so it just may take me a minute to come up with a title. Oh, there we go. So happy. I'm not very unique in my titles, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> um, oh, this is happiness. I'm kind of digging that, although it's kind of big. So... So that's good. So we got a couple of titles that I can work with. I could always go to my pictures, but I really kind of wanted to use these if I could. And I like that they're already, um, oh, yours is done. Wow. Good job, mom. Um, I don't, Ooh, how about super awesome? Will the black be too much though? It's such a boy term. Super awesome. <laughs> or we could do, hold on, I gotta get these out. Uh, or we could do totally rad or super rad. Alright. I don't know, I kind of like super awesome. Is the black too much to you guys? I don't have a lot of black in this layout, so I was kind of going blue, but um, I kind of like that phrase. So we got, okay, I have it down to two. I love your, I love your input. I so appreciate it from you guys. Um, so we have super awesome because he is, he thought this was so fun and he was having a great time. So I think this is a good fitting title. The other one is blue. And it's so happy because he was he was so happy and I don't know how we have placed this yet maybe like that or maybe it's you know per the per the template the titles kind of just underneath 
Um, I really think I'm liking Super Awesome. Put Wicked Cool. I don't have the... Well, I guess I could do Alphas for Wicked Cool, but um, that is a good title. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of liking Super Awesome, though. I think the size of the words really fit well. Even though it's black, I can, I'm going to pull in some embellishments that will hopefully tie that, um, the black in there. So, oh, you guys are saying so happy. I don't know. I might have to, I don't know. I'm not, I don't like the size as much as so happy. And I know it's blue and it matches, but I don't know. I think I might have to go against you guys on that one. I, I think I like Super Awesome better. Super Happy? I wouldn't... I would do that, but they're... It's um black and blue, and it just won't work. So, I think I'm going to go Super Awesome. Thanks for talking through that with me, guys, though. <laughs> I like the size, and I like that it kind of fills out, like, the, the length of the photos. Like, it balances really well. Um, so hopefully you guys can see that too, but, um, I think that's what I'm going to go with. All right. So we're going to get this title tacked down. This is such a fun font though. Um, such fun words. All right. So I'm also going to glue these down because some of it is going to land over the, um, glue. I mean the, the mixed media. Duh. All right. So we're going to glue these down to make sure they stick. I'm not, I'm not popping these up at all. I'm just gluing them directly on the, the background. And this glue does dry clear. So if a little bit leaks out over the sides, that's quite all right. You're not going to see it once it dries. I think they need to just make a ephemera pack of, or like die cuts like this. Well, this is an Australian based company. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll make my own, um, of all like main sayings, <laughs> um, such as, uh, wicked cool or wicked cute or, um, thanks mom. Or, you know, what's up bub? <laughs> All those funny, quirky little main phrases that only us manners really um, truly understand the meaning of them. Uh, and maybe make a die cut, like die cuts like this, so I can have them for future layouts. I appreciate, I appreciate that idea, Uncle John. Um, thank you. <laughs> Wicked cool bub, right? That would have been awesome to put on here. For next one, for the next layout. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. So now we got a title and it stands out very nicely. That white really helps um, the black and the, or the, the title itself stand up off the, the page. I like that it's nice and bold. So now we get to have fun embellishing. I'm so excited. This is my favorite part. Um, also the part that takes me a really long time as you guys have probably figured out by now by watching a few of these. Um, there's no real orange in here, so I'm going to kind of try and stay away from the orange. So I'm going through the ephemera packs now that that came with this kit. So. All right, let me move this over just slightly and so you guys can kind of see what I'm combing through. And all the fun stuff that comes along with these kits. Oh, they're so great. So I'm going to go in and kind of just go through all these bits and pieces. Every day is an adventure. Ain't that the truth? Especially when you have a boy. <laughs> I 
I swear to God, um, it's going to be soon that he is going to break a bone. He is like a monkey and he jumps off everything, like <laughs> climbs, just he has no, I shouldn't, I don't know about no fear, but he doesn't understand um, that he's not invincible and things will hurt and <laughs> he's just, ugh. he's a boy and I tell you, he's just gonna, gives me a heart attack some days, jumping around on everything. Um, okay, so that's just a couple of pieces. Again, I haven't um, stuck anything down yet. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for embellishments. So I'm just kind of going through what I have in these collections. I do have wood veneers too back here I want to remember because this is a perfect layout um, to add some wood veneers to as well um, just with the wood grain background. So let's see what I have here first. So I have this little well, we already have the word awesome, though. I don't want to be too redundant, but I have that flare badge. I might have another one that would work, so I'll take a look at those. So we have some fun frames here that I could always sneak in behind this photo. I see here. Thing about this foam is that you can play around with it. Lift it up a little bit. <sighs> These are just so, so cute. I kind of like this one too. I do believe it's time to be awesome. <laughs> That's so cute. Limitless. These are all, they're such, this is such a fun, uh, their, their embellishments are super fun. They're boy based ones. All right, let's see. You rock. Definitely gonna try and make sure that we get the, um, that visual triangle accomplished. They have some stars here. I'm not a huge fan of these die cut stars. They didn't come out very well in my opinion. Um, they're not, um, they're not clean cut. A is for awesome adventure. Here we go. Well, it's a cute little banner, but I don't really have anything to say on that. Skull and crossbones. It's more like a teenager thing. Do your own thing. Superhero. That's kind of cute. All right. I'm getting down to the bottom of this pile here. I'm not finding a whole lot. Oh, look, I have the word cool. And look how super cool that would have been. Perfect. I didn't realize I had those. But again, I would have liked to have had it in the same color scheme anyway. So I'm going to put those with my letters so I know that I have them for next time. All right. Not a lot in this pack either. So these were the ones that I was, um, I had leftover bits and pieces. So it's, it's, I wasn't sure what I was going to find in this pack. To be honest, six, four, I don't, could have done a countdown, I guess, but I don't have all the numbers. All right, so we got a little green arrow here. I don't know what I'd do with that, but we'll leave that out. Blue one. 
the stars. Okay. So there's not much in here. But what I can do is I did pull out some of the others to see um, if there was more pieces that I wanted to use. So they do have that green star banner that might be interesting. So let me pull that out of here. This little green dot. Of adds that circle element up there possibly and then we have fun little arrows that we can maybe tuck in under here on the opposite side again just playing around I know this probably isn't super exciting to watch, but it is it is part of the process, so. Hi Amy, welcome. Uh, there we go. Maybe tuck those behind. I could trim those arrows down. Kind of like those a little bit. Let's see what else we got hiding in this little package here. Um, we got a number one, a green number one. Some arrows. We have some stars. All right. Boys rule. 100% boy, one of a kind. Some tags. Little banners. Don't know that I'm going to need anything from that one. And then I have a whole other pack of the rad. And I love, I love the cogs in this one. So I'm going to see. And I got a couple more arrows. So, oops, smile. It's orange, but I might be able to get away with it. Or I have epic, but that well if I could do the there's a different color arrow. Alright, let's see. Well I did add orange there, so I kinda like the smile. So maybe I can get away with it. Just a little hint of orange. That won't be so bad, I don't think. Alright. If I can add it just in with the embellishments, that might not be too too bad. Another one of those star banners. Keep that out. All right. Adventure. I have that circle up there, but I want to make sure that I can um, you know, have, you know, kind of balance out that circle with, with something else. So we have epic, or do we have that smile? I don't know. I kind of liked the green and the orange over here. With that. Here we go. So we have an orange cog like a color wheel. You kind of tuck that in there to break up some color up there, possibly. Some yellow. There's another circle. And some more orange. I'm so glad I was able to get another one of these color packs. All right, so we have green and gray. And we have a nice big blue one. Hmm. Can I? That's 
it's going to be too big. But it might work over here. Possibly. So those arrows we're playing with. Um, and then green and gray. These are pretty much the same size though, so I may just have to do the green and add a different circle on top of that. Maybe like an enamel dot or something. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what else we got in here. Still a few more things. little person that's cute maybe I can add those in somewhere all right so we have more words here super awesome rad total totally all right so we're nearing the end of this ephemera pack see how many great things that are in here though it's awesome oh that's kind of a good one. I'm wondering if I could just, oh, maybe I just, I am gonna trim this down. Look at that, smile captured. Perfect, oh, I love that. All right. another star down there all right so I think kind of gone through all these pieces that in my mind makes sense to add to this layout so I think we're looking good so I'm just wondering every day is an adventure I might not even I don't even know if I want to add that because I kind of like I'm liking these cogs instead so if I can trim down that big blue one and then I can have like this three-way thing going on um, I don't think I had any more cogs I used it so I have to figure out something else round to put down here Unless I just get rid of this super huge one and I do green and gray, but then up here. Hmm. Or I can add like enamel dots or something. All right, we'll play with that for a minute. In a minute. <laughs> I'm getting a little sidetracked here. This is. If I cut this one in half, it might work. It's pretty big though. All right, so let's nail down what I do know I want um, attached. So, all right. I do like those arrows being up here. I like this here. So let's start with this. I'm gonna actually use some double-sided tape. I just wanted to make sure it sticks. All right. Such a perfect tag. <laughs> I love it. I'll let it hang over a little bit. As for this banner here, I can also do some double-sided tape. Because it is going on top of paper. So I am due for a new roll of this. I gotta go grab some.
Yeah, Tina, I agree. I was thinking um, I could do buttons or brads or um, enamel dots or some other circle. So I'm, I'm. That's where my head is at too. I just have to take a peek through my stash and kind of see what else I can add. Um, that's you know circular. Kind of balance it out. this. So I'm going to go ahead and plop this in here. Layer that in. I'm going to have to stick those back down. I need to, I need a wipe. Baby wipes are, oh, oh, thanks Colleen. Drive safe on your way home. <laughs> um, so hold on. I'm Gotta wipe my hands here. Wow, we're going on an hour and a half, guys. I'm so excited to see you sticking it out with me. <laughs> I didn't realize what time it was. Um, I'm just cleaning off my hands. Baby wipes uh, are great to have when you're working on mixed media, by the way. Um, they help clean up those messes. Hi, Patricia, good evening. Thanks for hopping on. We're doing, uh, we're at the point where we're embellishing right now. All right, so so I got that down. I like these green little circle doodads, banner, whatever you want to call it here. So we're going to add those. I got a new tape, roll of tape. So I'm going to stick that down. My double-sided tape I get from uh, Dollar Tree. I, it works really well. And it's a significant amount of double-sided tape for a dollar, so I feel like it's a good deal, and it's access, you know, easily accessible. There's a, um, uh, I always find it whenever I go there. So every time I go, I usually pick up a few rolls, um, just so I have it on stock. All right, so we got our little cogs over here. So I like the orange and green balancing against the in this corner, the yellow, sorry, not orange. Orange, yellow, and green are complementing each other really well. So I'm gonna do this orange. I think I'm gonna glue this down just to be safe. Um, or the yellow, goodness, I can't <laughs> speak of my colors right now. So I'm gonna do the yellow tape down and then I'm going to get a pop dot and do the yellow in, uh, kind of pop it up a little bit. And I get my sticky scissors because I do not like to use my good paper, st paper scissors for sticky stuff. I like to keep my paper scissors sharp. <laughs> and not gunked up. I know you can use like Goo Gone and stuff, but I don't even bother. I like to just keep it, keep them separate. So I have a pair of scissors I use just to um, cut up sticky stuff and tape and all that. All right, so got that little cog there. I probably will have to do like a enamel dot in the middle, anywho. All right, so we've got I'm trying to decide. These are kind of the same size, so I think I'm going to add the green up here. Kind of draws your eye, eye up a little bit, and then I can add the gray. Down here, I probably can cut him in half. Trim this guy down. Have him peek out just a little bit so he's not as prominent. Yeah, I think that looks good. We're going to do that. So I think I'm going to nix this guy. And so we are going to do some glue. him 
right in there. And I'll do some glue on this one as well because it's kind of sticking on the mixed media. And I just want to make sure that these things don't come up later. There's nothing more annoying than when you go to like flip through your album and your you have pieces like falling off. I can't, it just bothers me so much. So I've learned um, that wet glue is definitely your friend. Definitely, definitely your friend. All right. So we got, we got to glue this, these guys down here again. Make sure this is stuck. So get this tacked down. I like those banners on the back of it. So we'll just make sure he's, it's stuck down now for good. And my, as you can see, my paper's still a little curled, but again, that's okay. It's gonna go on a page protector. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> I love these little people. I feel like I need to put one on here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where he will go, but it's kind of funny. Those are cute. All right. We are getting there. You guys are troopers hanging out for this long. I hope you've enjoyed um, this process video or this layout. I hope you feel um, like less intimidated by mixed media because that was kind of like what I was aiming for for this layout. I wanted to show you guys that you can do it. It is possible. Um, and uh, it's also a lot of fun just to get a little messy and creative and kind of step outside your comfort zone a little bit. Because um, you never know, you know, how, you know, what you're going to end up making. Oh, good, Joyce. I'm glad you liked it. I can't wait to see yours. <laughs> can't wait to see everybody's, but um, Joyce, you always wow me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really hoping that I'm really hoping that these No Fail Fridays are kind of helping you guys um, build some confidence in trying some new things and realizing that you know, wow, I can I can create these layouts and I can do these techniques and um, it's I just hope it's less intimidating for you all. And if anything, um, even if you don't try, I hope you enjoy watching these. Because <laughs> as long as you guys enjoy watching these, I will continue to do them. Because uh, I have a lot of fun. I love teaching and sharing, and um, it's super fun to me. All right, smile captured. That is perfect. All right, so I have some stars kind of hanging out here, but what I, before I use those guys, I want to check and make sure that I don't have um, something else that would work better. So just bear with me a moment while I... Enamel dots. That's what I was... Puffy sticker and Cohen wood veneer. That's what I was thinking of. All right. So I have my little dish here kind of like my use it up bowls I like to plop in things that I oh this is too shiny that's kind of cool though so rad oh I might be able to still put it in there that's not so bad um I just call it I call it my use it up bowls just pieces that I just go in and, and try to grab out of and use uh, on layouts when at all possible so I just stick it under my shelf on my desk and I poke through it and see if I can find anything that might work like wood veneer <laughs> I love wood veneer um, and for, like I said earlier, for something like this, it um, tends to work out perfectly with that. It balances out that wood grain um, so well. I have three of these. 
cool. They're kind of bold though, I don't think. I don't mind plopping one on there. I like the so rad, but the cool could work too. Um this is a nice white button that's just so fun, but it's got pink in there and I haven't haven't introduced pink, I don't think, into this layout, so I don't it's kinda late in the game to do that. So these are all just buttons and brads and true story. <laughs> um just various little things that you know, little little flares and bits and pieces that might work on a layout that I'm doing. So I just like kind of you know comb through them to make sure that there isn't something that would work. And for that one, no. There's some more wood veneer on here. Oh no, this stuff. Made me laugh. That's cute. I like that wood veneer star, but if I don't have, oh, I think I actually, you know what? I might have a whole thing of wood veneer stars now that I think about it. I gotta look in my wood veneer drawer. Alright, so there's not much in here that I want to use. It's one of those I think I'll use though. Hi Diana! Or Welcome! Um, so let's take a peek, sneaky peek in the wood veneer drawer. I think. Do I have stars? Oh, no, I think I just have a bunch of arrows. Which arrows are fun, but I kind of was hoping for, that's something I need to get is wood veneer stars. Cause it would have been fun. Oh, I have little triangles though. I think I might be able to make those work. No, those are really thick. No, all right. Wood veneer stars would have been really cool. But since I only have this one round one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna introduce it then. Let me just double check and make sure I'm not missing anything. don't have it so I'm definitely gonna have to add that to my two buy list um, wood veneer stars and tiny wood veneer I do have some wood veneer hearts but again this I don't feel like the hearts would um, go well here in this layout so I'm not even sure how I feel about that I kind of like those two guys up there they really don't mean anything in this layout but <laughs> I don't know I just like that they're hanging out there so I might just keep them um, all right, so next I want to, uh, I haven't decided, um, kind of like that being there. I think I'm going to go with cool instead of so rad. Um, all right, so I'm going to check out what I have for, um, sprinkly bits like enamel dots and more stars because there's a few paper stars that came uh in that collection i don't know that i have any more oh i do so if i don't have any enamels i can go back in and grab some more stars from this ephemera pack but i just want to check and see what i have in my um book and i do believe yes I have some enamel dots that could match. Oh, I already have an open one, so let me do that. That could match. It actually matches that collection. I do have gold. Really don't want to do gold. And then these are rub ons. So I've got some enamel dots there. And then. Let's go with puffy stickers. Love me some puffy stickers and there's usually always, so there's some stars in here, but um, the yellow is kind of more of an 
a sunflower, so I don't really want to use that. Oh, here we go. Same thing though. Hearts. I got some dark blue, that doesn't really go. Hearts, hearts. Ooh. Thank you, Doodly Bug Designs. Look at those. Perfect. They're kind of small, so I might still want to introduce the um, the paper ones anyway. So let me go grab those, and then we'll play. <laughs> All right. So I need some more of my ephemera envelopes. I'm gonna have to do that after. All right. So we got a tiny little blue one. We got orange. I'm just going to add in some more stars to what we did with the modeling paste there instead of doing more modeling paste down here. So it was a fun little technique, but I'm just going to leave it up there. I'm not going to add any more. It's definitely one I want to play with. Those mousses I want to play with more for sure because I think they have a, a there's a lot of potential to have a, a lot of fun with those. I just gotta fish out all the stars here. Oh, there's yellow, green, gray. We got almost all of them. I think these are the big pieces. Yay! Oh, here's one. Some, another orange and some arrows. Perfect. All right. So let's see what we can do with these. Enamel dots and stars. So I'm not sure about this guy yet, so we're gonna leave that here. And I do love these little guys, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna attach them because I love them so much. <laughs> Where is my I'm just gonna use some double-sided tape. These are just so cute. dudes up there. <laughs> um, all right, so enamel dots. So I think, well, we got some orange, so I can stick with orange, blue, yellow, gray. So all these colors will really work, um, even the white. So let's do, so that's too big. Can't lift that up now. I'm going to do the medium size here. Ah. I do need to add a center to this. So I'll probably go ahead and add one more. I'll probably just do a try here. We'll add a gray. And we can do an orange. I might need to add some glue to that guy right there. I'm adding these in threes uh, just because it is visually uh, very interesting to do to do it that way um, that visual triangle I talk about a lot uh, it really does work it draws your eye around around the page and it connects everything if that makes any sense it really does connect everything um, so let's do those there and then I think I'm going to do some so I'm add an orange there
really have any nails, so it makes it tricky. Alright, so I have my enamel dots going on, my little tries there. So let me see if I can sprinkle in some stars. I don't know if I want to use these or not. So we're going to hold off on those. And I kind of want to use these guys. If I can. So let's see if I can add them in. to kind of balance everything out. Kind of fill in and add some extra with that, um, with the, what I've already done up here with the, the texture. I think this might work out okay. So we'll do an orange. a quick look here and see how I feel about that. It's kind of a lot, but I think it works. I was going to go in, I might still go in and do some white splats around, and I think that might pull everything together, kind of broaden this out. Um, But I think it's fun. It's kind of it's like it's like a gal galactic cloud that's exploded in the background. So I think I'm gonna stick with it. I think I'm gonna go with it. I'm not gonna be indecisive here. So we're gonna stick these down. I'm gonna use some glue just because it's gonna be easy to do that. Just right in the center. Make sure they get nice and tacked down. We're nearing the end. It's almost complete. And if you go back to that sketch, it's kind of crazy how We've used it as our base, we've used it as our guide, but we really turned this into our own design. Um, and that, again, that's why I like using sketches. It's a guide, it doesn't, you don't have to match it completely, and you really just turn it into your own, make it your own. That's so fun, so, so fun. All right, I'm gonna add some glue to this guy because it's not gonna stick. I don't. Tack that down. I'm going to hold that down for a second because it's kind of a little high. All right. We are almost there. So I think I'm going to come in with some white splatter. And I think that might finish this layout off. I think it came out really good. Really fun. A lot of different elements, a lot of different textures and colors going on, but they all complement each other. Which is great. Which is what I like to see. All right. So I actually just got a new Distress Ink spray that is white. Which I'm super excited about. So I'm going to just put some plastic over my photos and my words. I don't mind my words so much, but my photos, I don't want to get white all over them. So this is a uh, Dispress Resist Spray um, from Ranger. Um, oh, actually, this dries clear. I can't use this. It dries clear. Bummer. I was hoping it would be white. 
So we have some speckled egg, which is like a muted, I really think I need to do white though. So scratch that, we're gonna go to my watercolors. And we're gonna do some white, just good old white right from the watercolors. All right, so. Get my paintbrush, my spray bottle, so my white's right here. My desk is super messy tonight from all this creating. <laughs> all right. I just like to add, I don't know, for some reason, uh, to me, splatters just add that little bit extra. Um, fills in the blank spaces, just adds another element I guess um, I just love them and I I can't I don't know just does something for me I've just been something I'm into lately um, and so I'm just using this little round brush to go around and add some ink splatters And plus this is like a water layout, so I feel like the, the splats kind of give that splash feel of water, if that makes any sense. And they're not going to be too bright, they're not going to be too bold. It's just going to fill in a little bit. And I love the white on a darker background, such as this wood grain. I think it works out really well. All right, I did get a few, but I can just wipe that off. Okay, I think we're finally finished, folks. This was a marathon for sure, but I really appreciate you all sticking it out with me. And I hope you guys learned something. I hope um, you like the final result as much as I do. So let me give you a closer look. So here we go. Isn't that awesome? So fun, vibrant, colorful, messy, but everything just coordinates. I really love it. I love it. I love it. So that was mixed media. This is your no fail layout. Um, I, if you guys give this layout a shot, which I really hope you do give it a try. Make sure you post it to the Facebook group, Jessica friends, uh, Jessica and Grace and friends and pretty pages. And, uh, I'd love to see, uh, your interpretation of that sketch. I'd love to see your mixed media. I just, uh, I really enjoy seeing all you all of yours uh, projects and layouts. So make sure you interact on that group. And next week, um, I, I you know honestly I haven't really thought about what we're learning next week. Usually I have a plan, but I'm not sure. But I know it will be good, and we'll try to um, use use a new product or a tool that you have. Oh, I remember what I was going to do. I did have a plan. Silly me. Um, we're going to be using punches. And I know we all have a ton of punches. So we are gonna have fun with punches on next week's layout. So make sure you don't miss it, 9 p.m. Fridays. And I thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it and have fun scrapping. Bye.